Thank you for joining us today. I'm Erin. I'm Chief Strategy Officer. I'm Afton, Marketing Consultant. And both of us work here at Data, a fractional marketing company, helping organizations like yours solve big problems by giving you a full marketing team's worth of capabilities and know-how for less than the cost of a full-time hire. So this presentation will move pretty quickly. It's short but sweet. We'll have plenty of time at the end for questions and comments and general group discussion. And then we'll also email out a recording if you'd like to share this with friends and family or, I don't know, rewatch it with your whole family just because it's going to be that good. All right. <laughs> so if you're here today, at some point, probably recently, you've struggled with finding the right candidates for a job you were trying to fill. And I'm not going to deep dive on these statistics or get really dire here. But the big picture is it's competitive out there and there's more jobs than there are job seekers, even if we do count the 14 year olds. The math just doesn't work. And it's especially critical right now in the upper Midwest and for our states and communities to grow and be healthy and provide great quality of life. We're all going to have to work together on this problem and we're going to have to think about it in new ways. When there are more jobs than job seekers, which has been the case for a few years now, there's a shift in the dynamics. Instead of a job being something that someone is lucky to have, we have employees who have many options when it comes to where they work. In short, the employee or job seeker holds more power than the employer right now, which means you have to sell your job to them. We need to think of the employee as a customer of your HR department. The job you have available is the product they're considering, and we have to assume that they have many other options that they're taking into consideration. What is your company's value proposition for a potential employee to work at your business? And how is your company positioned compared to the other places of employment that they might be considering? And if you're thinking of your job seekers and current employees as your customers, then you realize that getting someone to buy your job is just like getting someone to buy your product. It, it comes down to their experience. If you have an easy, pleasant experience that your customer enjoys, they'll be more likely to buy from you. They'll be more likely to buy again from you. And they'll be really likely to tell others to buy from you. And that same concept applies to job seekers. And what we generally see is that there's three big questions that employers need to get right in order to deliver that solid, easy experience to their job seekers. And that's what the rest of our presentation is going to cover. And we're going to talk about best practices and tips on how to deliver the best experience possible so that you can attract better candidates and retain the good people that you already employ. So our presentation will cover these three areas, advocacy, reputation, and process. And we'll start with reputation. The first part of a job seeker's experience, it, it starts well before they talk to you. Often, especially if you're applying to local positions, there's an element of awareness, or I guess in some cases, there might be a lack of awareness. In this example, Metco here, they really struggled while, because everyone knew they had a big building when they drove past it, they might not have known what they did. And they didn't know that there weren't just jobs available, but real careers with huge growth potential. We helped them define an employer brand and run campaigns that educated the local workforce on who they were and what kinds of opportunities existed and gave a glimpse of their culture. Getting your name out there and associated positively with good job opportunities is the difference between candidates who seek you out preferentially and candidates who are applying to all possible options at once with one click on Indeed. Jaybird here is an excellent example of a strong employer brand. They use real people in their photos and that triggers a bit of a network effect, which since they're a great employer, results in impactful comments like the ones you see here. Yeah, the, the neat thing about examples like Jaybird is in a lot of cases, it can be really hard to reach that ideal end candidate. They might not be on Facebook or as online as some other segments of the market. 
but by building your reputation in general, by reaching their friends and their mom and other family members in a community, you also increase your chances of someone telling your ideal candidate, hey, I hear great things about Jaybird, you should check them out. And in general, a broad net is only going to benefit you when it comes to awareness of your employer brand. And we'll talk a little bit more about how much it can help you later on in this presentation. Speaking from personal experience, my cousin is actually the one who recommended I look at data and she's a teacher. She doesn't work in our industry, but she heard about data as a company and happened to pass along to me that she thought I'd be a good fit. And what's interesting is about six months prior to her recommendation, I had actually looked into data somewhat. And so when she brought the company back up, I decided to relook into job openings and apply. So it takes time. We might owe your cousin like a cookie or something, I think. She has mentioned this from time to time. <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. like, oh, you're still at data. Good job, me. <laughs> All right. So on that note, who here knows that their presence on these three sites, LinkedIn, Indeed, and Glassdoor, is claimed and branded? And almost all of you have some level of presence out there on these three sites. It's usually auto-generated if you're listing your jobs anywhere. But what I see is that very few companies take advantage of these platforms' free capabilities. All three of these sites are going to let you build out your profile with photos, descriptions, videos, and so on to help you showcase your brand. And Glassdoor even has a special middle level of functionality for people who fill out their profile better. It's called the open company designation. And that's still at the free level, but it gives you a little badge and you rank a little higher in search. So looking into the three of these is really critical. And this is important because while it's ideal that people seek you out because of your stellar reputation in the community, there's always going to be those candidates who first learn about you through your job listing. And what's their first impression of your company? Is it that there's this boiler, boring boilerplate job description that lays out everything you expect of the job seeker and says almost nothing about you, the company that's actually selling them a job? Or like we talked about, have you put the time and energy into claiming and managing your online presence, collecting positive reviews and showcasing team photos and describing your culture and actually showing people the team potlucks and the smiling faces and the community events that you participate in? When you're selling a prospect, a sales prospect, one of the things they're looking for in your sales process is attention to detail and thoroughness. And we've all been on the other side of this. If you're a mess in the sales process, we assume that operationally you're even worse. The exact same thing applies for job seekers. If your profile pages have an old logo and bad reviews that no one's responded to, it tells us there's just this lack of care there. And we assume that it doesn't get better on the other side of things when we're actually employed. If your lobby's a mess, your warehouse is probably really terrifying. Reputation is what gets candidates to the door. Your application experience is the door. Far too often, the job application is made with HR's convenience in mind, not necessarily the job-seeking customer's experience. If you're a stellar candidate with hundreds of options available, you don't need to take the time to fill out three pages about your grade school, teacher references, and where you went to high school. You just move on. And the drop-off rates for poor application experience are not only dismal, they're generally going to skim the best candidates right off the top, and you won't even have a chance with them. We helped Lindar implement a very basic, short, mobily optimized form with an optional resume upload for candidate candidates to indicate interest. And this just gets them in the door, right? From there, Lindar talks to them, puts them through more of their interview process, but also sells the job as they do. This has been instrumental in helping them get the broadest, best applicants. An exercise you can do after this presentation is to actually try applying to your own company. Pull out your phone, start with Google, find one of your jobs, and apply to it. Some of the things you might want to consider is, was it harder than you expected? Would it be a turnoff to a prospective employee? Are you not even able to apply online? How quickly did you get a response from your HR team? 
After you consider the initial application process, think about what other touch points exist in your hiring process. How are new hires introduced to the company's culture, value, and mission? Are there sufficient training and resources available for them to feel competent in their new roles? How are we ensuring smooth transition for new hires, especially if they're working remotely? The employee's customer journey is critical to understand and to have a plan so that you can improve it over time. Branching off a little bit of what Afton just talked about, it's not enough to just do a great job selling prospective job seekers on your company. You also have to retain your talent. And right now that's harder than normal because everyone's facing the same talent shortage and your employees look pretty great to everyone who's hiring. And so there's two parts to HR that we need to think about. Tactical HR is all the technical things that need to get done to be compliant, pay your people, and manage your workforce. Doing this part well is table stakes to the employee experience. That does not make it easy. I managed HR here at Data, and for small companies like us, this can be a very difficult arena to make efficient and consistent. You usually don't have the internal resources that it really takes. So we partner with the PEO for our own needs, and we have several referral partners in that arena who can help our customers get really solid at this tactical side of HR. But again, the tactical HR side is not all there is. Strategic HR, which you can really only focus on after tactical HR is in good shape, is the true difference maker between talent magnets and companies who churn and burn. It's about defining your values. It's about how you support and help your people grow with you so that they tell others how great it is to work at your company. This takes time and it takes thought and effort from leadership and HR leaders, but it's a necessary step because it's what the entirety of your employer brand and subsequently your candidate and employee experience should be based on and built off of. And there are powerful results if you can get this part right. When employees are in a good environment, when their work is appreciated, they have room to grow, HR is buttoned up, and there's a great culture, they like to talk about it. But the opposite is also true. When process sucks, when applications get dropped with no communication, when things seem opaque and inane, those employees also like to talk about it. The sad part is that happy employees are less likely to leave a review unprompted. When we're mad, we want people to know about it. When we're happy, we're usually just focused on our actual job. But those positive reviews and feedback are critical to driving your reputation. And the good news is if you remind people and make it easy for them and give them a why, those employees will very happily leave reviews for you. They want to work with good people, and they know that their public feedback helps attract good people. But we have to ask. Park Industries here not only has great reviews, but they're clearly really good at asking. Andrew here has been an intern for a month, and he's left a review on his experience. That tells you that this is likely a step in a checklist and maybe not just a happy accident. Hey, Afton, did you know (laughs) that most employee review platforms will let employees leave reviews every year, not just once? Erin, I am coming up on my seven-year anniversary at Data, and I do usually get an ask from our team to leave a review. So I've definitely updated my review uh, a couple of times over the years I've worked here. I look forward to the next one. All right. So like we're talking about, When it comes to driving your employer brand reputation, your best ammunition is your current employees, not just in reviews, but in everything. One of my favorite vendors for swag and tchotchkes and all the trade show fun stuff does an amazing job at this. Every marketing piece they have showcases their employees and their tenure. And this says two things. People like working there and they stick around. So it's probably a good job. And the person helping me knows their stuff because they've been there forever. It's not someone who just started six months ago and is still in training on their product mix. The person I'm talking to on the phone or live chat has solved lots of problems for hundreds of customers, and I feel well taken care of and confident. So a good employer brand driven by real people does double duty. It attracts prospective customers and 
prospective employees. I'm going to play a quick example from Jaybird once again here. Working for Jaybird companies is very rewarding because they reward you for working hard. You're going to do this for a living. Have fun with it. So just take pride in it. It's, and it's fun too. It's just for me, it's like building Legos. <laughs> so what I did as a kid. <laughs> Sense of I hope the audio came through okay on that. But I think you just pick up on Austin's enthusiasm. And who doesn't want to work with someone like that? Whether it's also building with Legos and he's your coworker and your buddy, or you're a customer and you're talking to Austin and you're seeing that the people who work on your project bring this kind of passion with them to work each day. Uh, real people want to work with real people. And we like to patronize businesses where employees are happy and taken care of. We like going to Costco more than we like going to Sam's Club because we know that Costco employers are compensated better. We feel better about shopping local than we do about shopping Amazon Prime because we know that our dollars are supporting humans in our community, ones that we can see and relate to. Harnessing employee advocacy is one of the most powerful marketing tools available on both the customer and the employee sides of your brand. But again, it doesn't manifest by accident. I personally love helping our clients develop resources like this with their employees, whether it's an interview for a blog or a social media feature or helping with a video shoot like the one that we showed with Jaybird here. When I review that final product, it usually makes me want to work for their companies and work with those individuals, which I find just fascinating because it's usually in an industry that I've never considered working in and I definitely don't have the skill set for. So don't worry, Aaron, I'm not jumping ship anytime soon. But like you want to work with the people or the individuals who are passionate about what they do. And that comes through in these types of content that you put through. So if you can implement your team's stories and gain participation, it will impact not just your marketing strategy, but it's going to impact your sales strategies as well. The real thing that we want you to walk away with today is it all comes together in a loop. Your reputation is the result of your processes that turns new employees into advocates. You as the employer need to deliver a great experience and you have to harness that experience to drive your recruitment and retention marketing. The impact is cumulative and this cycle of experience is what creates talent magnets. There's a lot required to do everything we talked about today. And we recognize that a lot of us don't have all those capabilities in-house. Data is a fractional solution to help augment your organization so that you can show up competitively on the job market. Fractional means we meet you where you're at with the teams you have today, and we give you the rest of the tools you need. We'd love to talk more about your individual needs, and we'd love to open it up for group discussion and questions now. I do want to make just one other comment because I see we've got Gil Krukshank in the audience here. And if you're in the St. Cloud area and you're not already aware of or using JobSpot to help with your employment needs, you really need to get connected into that system. So if you're not aware of it, reach out to us. We'd love to connect you to Gail and her team and see how they can help you as well.